Hi, hi everyone. Um, can you hear me okay? How's my voice sounding, Ray? Ray Pratish. Uh, I read some poems from this, so it's the first time I'm reading, second time I'm reading from this last week. My voice was a little bit higher than usual. Um, uh, thank you to the Poets and Players for putting this event together and for um, inviting me. Um, and thanks to all of you for coming out. And we'll start with a, a Manchester poem. Uh, it's called They Are They Were Building Something. They were building something, but first they were knocking something down. They smashed the windows with sledgehammers wearing goggles, then they went in with a couple of high-reach excavators. They took it away in pieces, then brought new stuff in on trucks. Big grey girders, great sheets of glass. Everyone I knew was drinking too much. All I had in the fridge were lemons shrinking and hardening. They put some CG renders of what they intended on the hoardings around the outside. Part of the building was still standing, a door going nowhere, a staircase, a phone receiver dangling. Yet before long, people with briefcases and coffees would mill purposefully around revolving doors. They didn't look much like us, or that they'd like as much. Uh, this next one's, um, it's called snorkeling, and it's, uh, I always like the idea that when um, you, you pick up a shell and even if you're in a shop somewhere not near the beach you would still hear the, the, um, the sea from where it was kind of washed up on and then I was kind of thinking what the shell hears if you know it worked, worked the other way around um, so that's kind of the conceit in this one um, snorkeling I was on the beach you were on the beach the sea was half on half off the beach you filled a bucket with the shells we found, pressed yourself to the ear of each in turn, and they heard your city, impatient and ceaseless. And you walking through it in your sunglasses and baseball cap, snorkeling through the shopping malls, <coughs> the department store china set displays and mannequin models listing in their underwear. The crowd swirling around you in unrepeatable patterns of desire, more complex than a vitamin B complex more complex than a military industrial complex, more complex than complex than magazine for men. Music, girls, style, entertainment, sneakers, technology. And you put out your arms in front of you but do not touch anybody and nobody touches you. They were always already leaving a space around you, a space of you plus the extra they call personal space around the bit that they call your place in society. We're getting in the car as the rain starts to fall. We'll keep the shells in a bucket outside the back door. Uh, this next one is about um, living your life according to the advice from uh, the little tags that you get on herbal tea bags. <laughs> it's called, uh, and there's probably a bit of advice in here for you, uh, for every, every one of you. Um, it's called Song About Putting a Bird in a Pie. A relaxed mind is a creative mind, says my inspiring teabag. Yours advises to empty yourself and let the universe fill you. We pick up the empty flower pot on the road and a man in a dressing gown, eating tomatoes, leans out of a window and demands that we put it back. I ask him if it's his pot. Put it back, he shouts. Put it back. Each smile is a direct achievement, I remind him. He replies that gratitude is the open door to abundance. We carry on walking. We get onto the future. When should we panic? Reading the tea leaves, you say that happiness arrives when we overcome the most impossible challenge. Your bag has exploded. You look at things in such a way that you are not distracted by being looked at, looking at things. The blackbird sings a phrase, then repeats it, like a monolinguist talking to a foreigner. You can't believe anybody would even write a song without putting a bird in a pie. The man from the takeaway under my flat has climbed into his bin to compress the rubbish in order to fit more in. He walks from one side to the other, then back again, like an animal trapped in the hospitality industry. <laughs> uh, this one is about um, uh, visiting Blackpool. Um, it's called uh, Stopping the White Man March. 
The last time I was in Blackpool, we went to a demonstration against something called the White Man March. We took a coach from outside a park and went to the wrong pub on the seafront. Then, kettled next to some flood defences, we watched a police van reverse into a bollard. We managed to get chips, and although we mainly just stood around in the wind, we stopped the march. It was at least as good as any other time I'd been to Blackpool. <laughs> I remember the white men in front of a souvenir shop, their arms outstretched as though releasing birds in a romantic music video, and one forced back by the police line, falling into a stand of fridge magnets. <laughs> Uh, this one's um, about uh, a can opener that doesn't work that I've had for uh, about 10 years. It's called Can't. When she goes into that silence, he feels like the can opener that rides around the edge of the can without opening it in any way. She could be a can of cool coconut milk. She could be a can of plum tomatoes. He is meant to be making a curry, settled and progressing in his career. She is a can of implacable butter beans. All kinds of possibilities are slipping away. <laughs> I'm going to read this one um, uh, from the uh, pamphlet that came out before this. Uh, there's a few poems from that in here, but I don't think you'll feel sure changed if you are an owner of the uh, pamphlet and you were to also subsequently buy the book, which is available in the back room. Um, <laughs> And it's, it was based on several paintings in the uh, Groening Museum in, in Bruges, um, uh, which I visited one, one time. Um, it's called The Flemish Primitives. The baby held a green parrot as if to say welcome, and the knight's breastplate held a message for the saint who we had been looking forward to meeting. The parrot itself said nothing but readjusted its footing like a child experimenting with its feet, and the baby stroked its green feathers listlessly. In the distance stood a machine with a great wheel turning up one side and a giant cloth hanging over much of its workings. They were building new countries in there, and the covered parts were taboos. The saint thanked the knight, accepted the parrot, twisted its head with his other hand, and, and, and Sorry, the saint thanked the knight, accepted the parrot, took its head with his other hand and twisted as though the parrot was a drink. But the saint did not drink. He stood there for a long time, the sun rising and falling behind him, his face darkening and lighting up again, clouding, clearing, shining. Okay, uh, I think this is the uh, last one I'll read. Um, uh, but I've lost the... Um, thing that told me what I was going to read, so I think I think it's the last one. Yes, <laughs> um, it turns up somewhere on me. Um, and it's um, it was it was written in uh, summer 2020, which you don't really need to know. I think it's kind of obvious, but if you're sort of only really half listening, then that will probably help you into the poem. Um, uh, it's called Popping Candy. It was the Wednesday on the third week and I was looking in through the windows at the advent calendar boxes people had found themselves in. One sat peering solemnly at a screen under a parabola of bunting. Another exercised in an upstairs window with a set of weights, a mirror and a side parting. And down the road, sitting on a sofa and eating popping candy, was a woman I knew from before all this happened. The night set like a huge orange jelly. In the park, someone had lost a beagle. I could hear her calling its name again and again, but I knew she would never find her lost dog. The wind played with the poplars like a pop star on a fundraiser in an African village, tenderly touching the heads of the children, and a wood pigeon flew out from them in a great commotion, someone beginning a round of applause at a false ending. A couple of police officers on police horses with little police horse riding hats were going down the road ahead of me. One of the horses was shitting as it was walking. The shit just kept bubbling up and popping out, and the policemen just kept talking. Um, thank you. Yeah.